Bish bash bosh, the Big Bash League is back. This is the 100 Club and this is our very quick preview of the forthcoming T20 competition down in Australia. I'm Tom and that's Rich. Hi Rich, how are you doing? Good day, Tom. How are you? I'm excited. Good day indeed. Yeah. yeah, we've had a couple of weeks off to recover from the World Cup and the excitement. Uh, work's been hectic, but you're back. Uh, hope all is well. Yeah, it's, well, we're doing the preview, but the competition, of course, has begun. A big match today. Sydney Sixers absolutely thumping uh, the Renegades, wasn't it? Uh, they did. Uh, well, ominous signs from the Sixers, who we'll come up into in a minute. Uh, but, yeah, clearly reigning two-time champions. So let's see if I pick that up. Um, I thought we'd just do, like, a, a really quick guide to the tournament as a whole, get into some of the teams, just throw some stuff out there. Let's do it. Okay, right. Well, what do you want to know first? For clearly, it started today. That's the big thing. Fox Sports in Australia, Sky Sports in the UK, and presumably on your local station, wherever you are around the world. Running through to the 19th of January and uh, all around Australia. So the eight teams, if you are not aware, Renegade, As sorry, let's, let's be clear. The order of these is the order they came in the league last year in reverse. So eighth last year were the Renegades down in Melbourne, followed by... Melbourne Stars, clearly not the place for cricket at the minute, Melbourne, for T20 anyway. Uh, then the Hobart Hurricanes down in Tasmania, Adelaide Strikers, Brisbane Heat, Sydney Thunder came in third, uh, Perth Scorchers, and then the overall winner, excuse me, were the Sydney Sixers again over on the East Coast. You've been to Australia, Rich. Which is your favourite ground? Well, I think anybody who's watched cricket in Australia will have a soft spot for the MCG because it's just a cathedral of cricket, you know was it nearly 100,000 capacity but personally um I lived and worked in Brisbane so uh I I have uh, the Gabba my favorite ground is definitely definitely the Gabba um yeah not 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 an, an acronym of anything it's uh, it's named after the Woolen Gabba which is a, a neighborhood in Brisbane it's located very close to the city center you know it's, a, it's an easy ferry ride <laughs> or you can nip around on the bridge um obviously you know, used a lot for the uh, the uh, Aussie rules during their winter, well, as if Queensland has a winter, but uh, you know, it, in, into the summer, very much the uh, the home of Queensland cricket and a bit yeah. of a fortress for Aust Australian cricket over the years. And uh, yeah, a good place to watch the game. Yeah, a bit of a fortress for the Brisbane Heat as well. They tend to do all right there. Um, we know clearly the pandemic continues to have its effects, but crowds are back in. We saw this morning uh, Sydney at the SCG had a, a Decent crowd, wasn't exactly full, but let's see how they get on with it. It's exciting stuff. See the KFC bucket helmets all back out in course as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in their other 11th other year of sponsorship. Oh, yeah. Other fried chicken is available. <laughs> well, absolutely. I did notice McDonald's were doing some sponsorship as well. Deep fried food wars in the cricket in Australia. Okay. What the BBL gets slightly confusing with, if in my opinion, is the crucial. Uh, the very, very complicated sort of winning stage. So eight teams, they're going to play each other uh, twice, home and away, throughout the uh, throughout the tournament, as I say, up to the, the uh, 19th of January. Then there's this sort of weird stage where actually the top five teams are going to have a chance of getting through to the final. So eliminator, fourth versus fifth. Then the qualifiers, first versus second. And then you see that it works itself out. So the third place will play the fourth or fifth winner. Then the loser of the qualifier has to win a semi-final essentially against that winner of the knockout, eventually providing uh, the person in the final on the 28th of January. That's a Friday. Looking forward to that in the new year. But plenty of cricket to get into over the uh, coming weeks. Are you happy with that one, Rich? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense. And I like the idea that you really reward the teams who come first and second in the league. Um Strikes me that it's a very spread out tournament. So we're starting the 5th of December and we're not going to have a winner till the 28th of Jan. So it's going to be you know, running uh, on our screens for the next, you know, best part of the next two months. Yeah, largely in the middle of the night over here. Maybe that is going to play into the squads, of course. Uh, the squads have been announced. Uh, a match day squad of 18. Some teams have actually got a few more on the books than that. Uh, on the match day squad, again, a maximum of three overseas players. Again, some of the squads have actually got four on the books, uh, just to give some contingency, as you can imagine, in current conditions. The more interesting thing about the BBL is actually some of the nuances, I think, in the rules. And some of these we've seen before, some of them are new, and some of them have been enforced. So no DRS, decision review system, since this year, uh, due to COVID factors, lack of equipment, and people to operate it, essentially. So that means it's down to the umpires in the middle. You're a big fan of that, going back to the old school? Um, no, I'd rather see DRS in there, I think, at, at the highest level. Yeah. But we're going to make do with it. I think that's a, an understandable reason, at least, for why yeah, there's no DRS. Yeah, I think so. 
you are, are, I believe, though, a fan of the timed out rule. You go on, give us a quick bash on what that means. Well, I think it means that the, well, in this case, you you only have seventy five seconds, right, rather than normal yeah. two minutes. Now they they were they were talking about a rule. I don't think they went for it in the end. Where I think if you were what's it with seventy five to ninety seconds, then you would you would face a, a sort of a, a delivery of death where you weren't allowed to defend your wicket, right? Yeah, well, that is the case. So that's what the they are doing. Going that oh, okay. Yeah, for under if you take more than seventy five seconds to get to the wicket as the incoming batsman, you then have to stand to one side while the bowler bowls at your empty, <laughs> undefended stumps. <laughs> if they hit, you're out. <laughs> Hilariously, uh, yeah. if uh, if they miss, then it's a dot ball, and you, you that's fine. And then if uh, if they give a no ball, actually, you get the free hit anyway. Um, and if you've crossed, so you're meant to go into the non-striker's end, actually, then it's, it affects the, uh, the the person who's crossed with. So it can actually be quite hilarious if oh. uh, expects that, that. Let's hope we see that at some point. Come on, then. It, <laughs> It could be quite fun. I, I'd like the idea that just having to sprint on with half a pad on or something because you got caught in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, few other last bits and pieces on the rules side. A four over power play on this uh, T20 uh, tournament rather than the normal six because they've pushed two of those uh, overs into what they're calling the power surge. So the batting team can opt to have their two other remaining power play overs consecutively at some point after the 11th over. And that means then there's only two fielders allowed outside the uh, the circle. And then yeah, two other rules we saw I, last year. Go on. I was just going to say, I, I do like that rule. And I think we start we saw that when the first, when power plays first started come, to come into uh, one day cricket, that there was a, quite a few leagues experimented with the idea that the batting side could choose when to take that. And then it gradually sort of drifted out of it again. Um, I really like that the Big Bash has this because it sort of adds a tactical element to it, especially when you know two batsmen are well set. You know, is this the moment where we pull the trigger or not? Yeah, and absolutely. We saw that this morning's game. I like the fact that it can break. Sometimes T20 can get a little formulaic, you know, don't lose three wickets in the power play and off you go kind of thing. That might add a different dynamic to it. I like it. Uh, X-Factor player and Bash booster back from last year. So the X-Factor player means you essentially you can have a sub at the 10 over point. So a bowler, if they haven't bowled more than one over, can get subbed off, uh, someone on the fielding side, or a batter, actually, if they're just stuck in mud, you can pull them off and bring out your power hitters. How was that one feel with you, Rich? Yeah, I'm, I'm all for a bit of innovation. As you say, we're, <laughs> we are the 100 club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who are we to uh, comment on <laughs> tweaks to rules? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a bit of fun. I don't mind it. And the bash boost league point. Okay, so... This one, again, repeating from last year, such that if uh, in the second innings of the match at the 10 over point, if you are ahead of the chase, then you actually pick up a bonus point. And if you're behind the chase, the, uh, the the bowling team at that point picks up the bonus point. So actually, and this year it's three points for a win as well as with previously it's been two. So you can actually have four points uh, on the board, um, you know, from every game if you, uh, if you restrict in the uh, second innings. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, a little bit. I think it's it's sort of you wouldn't necessarily tactically be behind the chase you know, if you were trying to win the game. You'd always want to be ahead of the head of the, the thing. So if you all sort of stuck like well behind the eight ball at ten overs and then you pull off the victory, I don't know why that's not as good a victory as if you sort of cruised the chase. So you know, for me, yeah, that's a bit of meh that one. But yeah, otherwise, it's sort of decent bag. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one again. So something we'll have a go. We saw it last year. I don't know how much difference it makes. As and if if you're uh, you know the Melbourne Stars this morning, getting to ten overs in the second innings would be a lovely achievement as well. <laughs> getting oh. back to our, our friends from Turkey again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look at these teams then. So eight teams, as I say, starting in alphabetical order this time. Adelaide Strikers. I've named a star player. It's our old friend Rashid Khan. Uh, fresh from the yeah. World Cup, funny enough, interesting... on the franchise circuit. Yeah, well, one interesting thing about the Big Bash is because it is such a long season and there's a lot of cricket going on elsewhere in the world, they do struggle a little bit in terms of having those absolute marquee names coming into it um, because, you know, a lot of people play cricket elsewhere. But you're yeah, Rashid Khan, abs absolutely on the circuit. He's been with Strikers, I think, a couple of seasons now. And, um, yeah, yeah, very much sort of... Uh, would like to see how he develops with the bat through this tournament because, you know, we talked about in the summer... He thinks of himself as an all round He's obviously a brilliant bowler. But uh, in, the, in the T20 World Cup, he wasn't given much of an opportunity by the Afghans I, to bat. 
Honestly, I think the loss of Travis Head, who's picked up the number five spot in the Ashes squad for Australia, is a big blow. That's the team captain. They've lost Alex Carey as the wicketkeeper, vice captain of the strikers as well. They're going to need Rashid Khan with the bat, I think. They're going to need the wildcard, George Carton, to chip in with a bat. You know you can do that as well. Because otherwise, I think they look a bit thin in the batting department. Yeah, and basically the Australian Sussex, aren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, that's it. George Garton is actually a Sussex uh, lad, and uh, Jason Jason Gillespie is the coach uh, for the. Yeah, the and, and Tra- Travis Head played for them. Um, yeah. Also, Rashid Khan played for Sussex, and then who else? Uh, I'm sure I can find a few more. You carry on. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go, if if they turn that into the Southern Braves, then they'll be laughing this year. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, we'll see how they get on. So the next team, Brisbane Fire, uh, Brisbane Heat. Sorry, I just see flames. I hear fire. Um, <laughs> Chris Lynn, top scorer all time in the BBL. Um, but they've got an interesting wild card. He was the number two scorer overall in the 100 uh, that we saw last summer in Ben Duckett. Are we excited to see Ben Duckett down under? How do we think you'll adapt to those conditions? Yeah, I think I'll enjoy playing at the Gabba. Um, you know, we, 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 he plays his cricket for knots, obviously. Um, you know, used to you know, high scoring ground at Trent Bridge. And I think uh, it, it, it'll go similarly. Uh, up there, yeah, be interesting to see how he does. And he's sort of one of these players, isn't he? That's just about on the fringes of the England uh, white ball setup. So if he has a good tournament here, that could certainly get himself in the conversation for for the next white ball games coming up late, uh, in the Windies early next year. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I think he's a great talent. Um, I'm not just picking English bears for wild cards, I promise you, but there are lots of English bears in the tournament. Uh, but I do worry about the Brisbane uh, team having, again, a little bit of a problem with the heat uh, in in depth. Um, so hence why I think they are quite unfancied overall for the tournament. OK, next up, Hobart Hurricanes. OK, what did you make of Matthew Wade? Can he car- carry on that sort of World Cup form going into uh, the new season? I mean, there's no reason why not. Um, looking at it uh, kind of objectively, he he had a very good uh, T20 World Cup. It was sort of some very crucial interventions, not least in that semi-final win over Pakistan, where he, you know, almost single-handedly dragged Australia home. So they're taking enormous confidence in with that. Quite like the look of the uh, the Hobart Hurricane side. Yeah, they're a good-looking team, aren't they? Yeah, they've got some some interesting, uh, you know. Pickups, obviously, Sandeep Lamachain. We we were disappointed not to see over here this summer because of you know, ridiculous visa issues. But you know yeah. he's been there a couple of seasons now, done well. Uh, they've also brought in Harry Brook, who did very well at Yorkshire, um, and Jordan Thompson as well, sort of a bit unusual one. And they add that to a you know fairly well uh, well um, embedded Australian spine. So um, not least Darcy Short uh, yeah. at the top of the order. So yeah, she could be it could be a sort of a sneaky outside shot the Hobart Hurricanes. Thank you for backing up my uh, my judgment. Sneaky contenders. No, I thought they looked pretty good. So I'm excited to see. Certainly a bit better than I thought than the uh, than the Heat and Adelaide setups in terms of balance overall. Okay, let me just check out the next one. Ready? Okay, we are ready for the Melbourne Renegades. Had a terrible time of it uh, last year, um, and and in truth have really been quite poor for a few years now. So I think there's some interesting stuff going on there. We've got clearly Aaron Finch, top quality performer. Alongside that, um, I like Reese Topley, and he's quite open in, when he's talking about the BBL in terms of what it's done for his career. It says it sort of re- resurrected his career, uh, and we saw him come out again in the the, uh, the hundred last year, bowling well uh, for uh, the Spirit, and uh, and then taking that into a, a place on the World Cup uh, team for England, albeit not in the main squad, actually taking that forward. So maybe he's going to have a bit of, a bit a bit more on that breakthrough uh, that he's seeing in the white ball game at the minute. Anything else for the Renegades for you? Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, they were they were bottom last year. They didn't start particularly well this time out. I mean, one thing looking at their squad as you go through sort of one to eighteen is that you know we're 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 not cricket journalists. We're cricket fans, so yep. you know we don't follow it as closely as others do. And there's not a lot of household names in that that squad for me. I mean, that on the other hand, it means as you follow the tournaments you go through, you 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 get to know some of the players that you otherwise hadn't watched before. But you know, I look it through it and I look at it compared to you know, each of the other teams, I can pick out sort of five or six of their players straight off the bat and I have a good sense of how they'll go. But, you know, with the Renegades, you know, don't really seem to have much strength and depth. And the, and the overseas they do have flattered to see a little bit. You know, as you said, probably very good, but, you know, Mohamed Nabi is on the circuit a little bit and yeah, you know, hasn't been great the last couple of years. Yep. So uh, all to do for that Melbourne team. But clearly we have the other Melbourne team as well in the stars. Uh, and they do have some stars in the lineup and actually 
Um, I think they're, you know, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how they react to the drubbing this morning of 61 all out, uh, as they were against the Sydney Sixers, because players like Glenn Maxwell, Adam Zampa, uh, it goes on, it would suggest that they do have plenty of quality in there to actually make a good fist of this tournament. Yeah, I will. I'd almost sort of would, have, would flip that the other way around, in that I would have Adam Zampa as the star player after the way yeah. he bowled in the T Twenty World Cup, and then you know, you know, Maxwell more as the wild card because you know he he, he did have that good run of form with the uh, RCB towards the end of the IPL, but he can be a bit hot and cold. I mean, I throw into that mix Mark Stoinis as well. Yeah, I think so. Your, your quality white ball cricketer. Um, Joe Clark will be an interesting one, um, mm. and of course, one of my favourite players in Case Armour, you know, part part yeah. of the gang. So. Um, yeah, I think I think reasonable reasonable side. What's that? Thirteen for two, similar to the Hobart Hurricanes. Makes makes yeah. sense. In and around the mix, possibly certainly for the latter stages, if not winners overall. Uh, Glenn Maxwell, the second num uh, highest number of sixes all time in the BBL, uh, beaten by seventy five sixes by one other player who we've already mentioned. Do you know who that Chris is? Lynn? It Chris is Lynn? Chris Lynn, massive yeah. six hitter, and I didn't bring that stat up before. Hence why I get to dig it out now. Okay, Perth. Over to the West Coast, to the Wacker, and uh, I think they're using a couple of grounds this year. Uh, Perth Scorchers are looking like a strong squad. Now, they've lost Liam Livingston and Jason Roy um, from that, which I think will be a huge blow. But they have plenty of other interesting uh, options in there. I mean, there's Jai Richardson. I've gone for Peter Hatsoglu, I think, um, who had a great, um, great season last year for, I think it was the Renegades. Uh, and now I'm going to pick it up again with the Perth Scorchers, if you can repeat that form. That bowling attack looks really good, with someone like Mitch Marsh at the top as well. Yeah, do we think Jai Richardson's going to be around, or is he going to be pulled into the test squad at various points? Um, I guess that'd be my question there. Yeah. Mitch Marsh, um, again, had a, had a decent World Cup, you know, culminating with that, that performance in the final. I'm interested to see at the top of the order, sort of Cameron Bancroft and Josh Inglis. Mm. Um, mm. I think it could be quite an exciting um, com combination. And also one of sort of, uh, very underrated bowlers in my mind, Andrew Ty, who I think uh, you know is one of the sort of premier proponents of you know, I think of six different balls and over. You know, absolutely amazing with his uh, his change ups, etc. So I think uh, be interesting to see uh, uh, how he goes in the tournament. Does a good job. Okay, let's get into these Sydney boys then. The overall favourites are three to one. Sydney Sixers dominant performance today, racking up a record total in a T20 match at the SCG this morning with 213. Uh, and it was really uh, more of the same from that man, Josh Felipe, who I've named as the star player. Um, player of the tournament last year, 83 this morning. Um, Dan Christian, also an interesting prospect with both bat and ball, came in as a pinch hitter today. So, you know, what's going to topple uh, the Sixers off the throne? Well, I'd always heard him referred to as Josh Phillip, but I'm going to call him Josh Felipe from now on because I think that's great. <laughs> that's what uh, that's what the Aussie commentary team call him, you know. They like call him Felipe. Brett Lee. I don't know how you know, <laughs> what Brett Lee's language skills are like, but you know that's what he's uh, going. I mean, they they won it the previous two years, haven't they? This is this yeah. will be the hat trick. Um, you know, they just look a you know, quality side from one to eleven. You know, James Vince. Uh, was second leading scorer last year, you know, yeah. you know what, 95, 98, the final two games. Yeah, he's, he's, he's coming in on good form. And you know, 40 quite strong. this morning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Moise Enriques. Moise Enriques, famously Madeira born, Moise Enriques. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm um, really getting and, chest my languages out now. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So a cosmopolitan bunch. And then, you know, Steve yeah. O'Keefe, um, the, yeah. the very experienced spinner who, who started off with, I think four wickets today. Yeah. So, yeah, they look strong. I'm sure they were Team they'll be there or thereabouts. Okay. Yeah, I think so Let's too. Flip to the Thunder then, Sydney Thunder. Okay. Very English feeling sort of comments here. Um, not as fancied, but I'm interested to see Sam Billings clearly being in good form this year. I'm definitely interested to see Sakib Mahmood in uh, Australian positions. Do you think they'll suit him? Yeah, they could do a little bit. Um down at the SCG. Uh yeah, I mean he's quite he's quite tall. He can get the ball to reverse. Um, quick enough quick enough well i guess we'll find out but uh no i think it'd be good for his education and billings obviously hasn't played an awful lot it, it feels like in the last few, few months in the ipl world cup you know he seems yeah. to be very good at running drinks so be, he'll need some game time but uh no I'm, I'm interested from the aussie side i'm looking forward to seeing sort of ben cutting uh yeah. and uh usman kawaja who i think uh you know, 
you know, still pretty good players. Yeah, um, Kawaja clearly beaten out to the fifth place in the Ashes squad that's going to play on Wednesday. I think he's still going to be around that, but hopefully we'll see him somewhere in the tournament as well. Yeah, um, indeed. And Alex Hales, clearly um, part of some of the terrible stuff that's been happening around cricket over the last few months um, and with some pretty unsavoury allegations of racism going with him. Is he the sort of person who can just carry on with the cricket, do you think? Or do you think that's going to affect? I, I honestly don't know is the answer to that question. Probably doesn't hurt that he's you know half the world away, but you know, you know, it's a small world now, and all of all of the cricketing world is talking about it. And um, yeah. you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be mentioned by the crowd certainly. Um, I don't know if there's sort of enough of a professional code amongst cricketers that you know he won't be they won't mention it on the field. I've seen a few interviews where some of the players are saying that some of these things won't be discussed. You know that they say there's a line, but yeah, you know, I'm not sure in the heat of the battle. So I mean, he but he's been through some controversial incidents before before this. I mean, obviously. The nightclub incident with Ben Stokes, you know, his drugs ban, etc. So he's no he's no stranger to controversy. So you know, maybe maybe he will be uh, he, he will be able to deal with it. Uh, much as he got he was able to deal with getting hit in the balls twice in two balls two hundred. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a nicer chap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rich, that is enough of our musings on the team. There's well, plenty of cricket well, to come. Oh god. Well, no, no, no. I mean, come on. Who's gonna win it, Tom? Who's gonna win it? You've put, Okay. Uh, I'll, who, no, who, who, I'll, say, I'll give you two. Okay. Who are you supporting and who's going to win it? Okay. I would like to see the Sydney Thunder do really well because of Sack Mahmood. I am interested in seeing how he gets on. But I think uh, I'm going to go with Hobart. Let's have a look at them for a really well-balanced squad as the winner overall. Let's see. It's shock to the Sixers' dominance. Say the Sixers, gone. Gonna... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to say due to due to my uh, my year in Brisbane, I'll be um, sticking with the Brisbane Heat, okay. uh, but I think the Sixers to uh, to three beat. Lovely, looking forward to it. Okay, that's a very quick roundup. Uh, we will have a, a a few more chances to look in on the uh, BBL as we're going forward. Clearly, also, I would also like to mention Roth Chand, one of our subscribers. Uh, I know he's uh, having a look at doing some videos on the BBL himself. Uh, Roth, if, if you're watching, great to see you here. Stick down below if you're going to do that. We'd love to check him out. Uh, do so if you're also watching. That's great. Uh, beyond that, any closing comments, Rich, on the cricket? The, the bash comments. Bish, bash, bosh. I'll close it that way again. Okay. Get up early. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, thank you for joining us on the 100 Club. Mm -hmm.